Welcome to another episode of Salt Air. My name is Tom Hatch, the creator of Salt and the CTO of Salt Stack. In this episode, I want to talk about the reactor system in a little more depth. I've talked before about how salt has beacons and reactors, but the question arises, what can we do with these reactors? And what sort of concepts do they expose? Now, when I'm working with a master and a minion, there are a lot of different options that I have around these reactors. The first one I want to talk about is orchestration. Now, when we look at orchestrated complex routines, typically the way in which we think about these complex routines is linear in fashion. We want to be able to say we do step one, then we do step two, and down the line. But the reality is, is that while this works just fine to, say, set up a blog website, more complicated infrastructure can have some real problems, if anything, just scaling and waiting for a linear orchestration routine to run. This is where event-driven orchestration can come in. It's easy to be able to use our single event reactor to set up listeners for specific events. So that when, when this stage completes, we can have that reactor fire a new command down to whoever's next inside of the orchestration routine. The nice thing about this approach is that it doesn't have to be linear. If we're event-driven, I don't have to go down that list of commands. Instead, it's easy for me to say that I can have these operations run in parallel, and then these follow-on operations run afterwards. We can set up a truly distributed orchestration system. And so having that distributed orchestration system, well, it it means that you're able to scale. It means that you're able to get things done quicker. And so that's an orchestration paradigm. Now, if I want to move ahead on another paradigm, we can use an auto-healing concept inside of SALT. An auto-healing system means that we've got a beacon, and that beacon reports that something is bad. Something's out of whack. And so then we go up to the reactor and we've got a and we can have a reactor file which is listening for that specific bad event. And then it can subsequently fire a command back. So as an example, let's say that we've got a beacon that is watching file system space. And so if we've got a beacon that's watching file system space and the file system space gets filled up, then it would be easy for that file system beacon to say, hey, I'm gonna start firing events. I'm above 80, I'm above 95% capacity on this drive. And then we could have a very simple reactor that is able to say, one, we're pushing capacity of the drive. I can go notify someone. But more importantly, two, I can do some preliminary things to try and make sure that that system stays up long enough for a human to intervene. And this is where auto healing comes in. It would be very easy to then have a reactor file that says, hey, let's clear out some caches. Let's empty the temp directory. Let's rotate some logs. Whatever we need to do to clear out some of that disk, disk space. Similarly, these auto healing routines can be tied directly into applications or into database systems. Being able to have these auto healing routines can be really helpful to keep an infrastructure up until you wake up or keep an infrastructure up until the right people are able to get their hands on it and fix some of those core problems. For some of our customers, they've come back and said that auto healing routines have been able to save 75% of their team's time. Some other customers have come back and gone so far as to build auto healing and auto readjusting systems using the salt reactor to have complete defense against things like distributed denial of service attacks. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about for this talk is 
the thorium reactor. Now, the salt reactor is a single event reactor. It's waiting for one event to come in. But what if we care about multiple events or the absence of events? This is where the thorium reactor comes in. The thorium reactor allows you to listen to multiple events coming from multiple sources. It allows you to say, if I've got events of type X, I'm going to put the information from those events into registers. And then those registers can create thresholds and say, um, what's the load average across a specific target of systems? Once that average load average gets to a certain height across those systems, then we can respond. And maybe that means spinning up new servers, or maybe that means spinning some down. Maybe it means that we've got a canary environment, and we've got a thorium reactor tied to the canary environment, and that reactor can say, I see that there is an imbalance between my two targets. Let's cut this canary environment down because it's going to cause further problems in my infrastructure. Or let's say that we want to look for the absence of events. One thing that's a really common use case for the thorium reactor is that Inside of a salt ecosystem, you might be spinning up a lot of virtual machines on an ongoing basis. It's common to spin up and spin down these resources. And so using the thorium reactor, it's easy to be able to say, hey, I've got a beacon that's firing a status, and the thorium reactor can keep track of that status. And then we can have a reaction in the thorium reactor that says, I stopped hearing from this minion. I'm going to just assume it's gone. And then I can go ahead and delete that minion's key and execute some routines that clean up after that system. And so that cleanup routine is actually the main thing that we demonstrate inside of the Thorium docs when we're introducing Thorium. The ability to come back and say, if something doesn't happen, I still want to react because something should have been happening. Hopefully this answers some of your questions about event-driven paradigms inside of SALT. Only able to cover a few of the use cases today, but hopefully we'll be able to cover some more with demos and future episodes and use the little chat on this routine to be able to make sure that people understand some of those high-level concepts. Thanks, and until next time.